Hello and welcome to this second podcast of the Catholic Church in Africa. Today, part one of the Church in Africa. I'm Paul Coleman, the Holy Cross priest and professor of theology. And today, I want to talk a little bit about some of the dynamism of the African Catholic Church as I've experienced it and as I have learned about it in my own researches. Of course, most of us here have images of Africa that highlight the tourist attractions, which are ample in certain parts of the continent. In Eastern Africa, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, where I've spent a lot of my time, uh, that's certainly the case, that um, tourism is a big industry in those three countries, and there are wonderful things to see. Yet here, I want to focus, of course, on the nature of the Catholic Church in Africa. And to do that, I want to talk a little bit about the shape of the Catholic Church in one city, in one country. Now, as the first podcast made clear, Africa is a huge place and the African Catholic Church is complex and has a different shape and set of experiences in each of the 60 or so countries there. Very small populations of Catholics in some places and overwhelming majorities of Catholics in others. Nairobi, Kenya is distinctive because it's a city that has lots of Catholic institutions, for one thing, seminaries, universities, headquarters of religious communities. It's also a place where the Congregation of Holy Cross, which founded Notre Dame, has had a presence since the late 1970s. And I've lived there a couple of years myself, first as a seminarian and then as a seminary professor. And I've also done research there. So I know the city reasonably well. Um, so Kenya is in Eastern Africa. It, this, this, the equator passes right through it. Uh, you can see the map of Africa in the bottom left-hand corner of the slide and Kenya highlighted, and Nairobi is the largest city in the country. There is a national park right adjacent to the city, hence the giraffe in the, slide, in the photo above it. And those photos to the right are images of Nairobi's downtown, which is really quite modern and beautiful. Nairobi is also distinctive because it has one of Africa's largest slums, Kibera, a famous place for non-governmental organizations of which there are estimated to be 1,000 present. Many of them church related, not all Catholic church related, but many are church related. The Holy Cross had a formation house where seminarians and brother candidates were trained in our community adjacent to Kibera for a while. We're not elsewhere in the city, but I lived there when I taught. Um, and Kibera is a heartbreaking place, but a place of a lot of promise too. Most of Nairobi is not like Kibera. And actually the place where Holy Cross has been present the longest and which I'd like to talk about the most is in another neighborhood called Dandora. Dandora probably has 150,000 or so people. And I lived there for 18 months as a seminarian, arriving there about 10 years after Holy Cross had founded the parish there. It was a new settlement in the late 1970s when we began the parish. So we were one of the larger institutions to begin. And I would say the Catholic parish run by Holy Cross there, it's called Holy Cross Parish, is the leading institution in this in uh, this uh, semi-slum. I wouldn't call it a slum because there are structured houses there. Um, we have schools, we have a hospital, a clinic, a maternal clinic. Um, it has ties with various parishes in the United States that have supported it over the years. The bottom right is the original church which seats about 2000 people. If you go to Dandora Church on Sunday, the worship you experience there will be the greatest Catholic worship of your life, unless you're someone who really can travel the world. It's vital, dynamic, dancing, music, drumming. Um, a bit of a story, when I was there as a, um, as a seminarian at the Easter Vigil, after we had been there all night um, celebrating the resurrection of Christ, um, I stepped out and I said to someone, um, an African friend of mine who I'd attended the service with, well, wasn't that beautiful? The music was just great. And all my friend could say was, Jesus is risen, Jesus is risen, Jesus is risen. When you pray in Africa, you recognize Jesus is risen. It's evident in the people who witness to their faith every day. Um, besides, of course, dynamic celebration, um, Africa, and the Catholic Church in Africa in particular provide a number of different services. Let me go back a slide because that's a school, the upper right hand corner with the schools that we host in Dandora. And um, sorry, we also host um, and coordinate AIDS ministry. I was able to attend a group of women who had joined 
uh, guided by the church a little bit, but mostly they were self-sustaining, a mutual support group for people who were going on to um, medicines that support antiretrovirals, especially that support people living with HIV AIDS. This is a young man, by this photo on the right, who was testifying about the death of his mom, but encouraging these other mothers to support each other. Um, when you start antiretroviral drugs, you're, you feel pretty poorly for a few months. And so until you build up your resistance to them and get used to them, you need assistance from other mothers who can take care of your children. And this is the kind of thing this group does. That kind of support in health and education is a landmark and feature of the Catholic Church across the continent of Africa. It's one of the places where Catholic dynamism is most clear. Unsurprisingly, the Catholic Church is a widely respected institution on the continent of Africa in almost every country. Um, and um, that's in some ways because other institutions aren't as trusted, uh, but it's also because the Catholic Church provides so many much needed services and because the institutions supported by the church are reliable for the provision of these services, health and education in particular. Uh, it's a place where you can be really proud to be Catholic. Um, I like to say, when I get frustrated by the church in the United States, it's good for me to go to Africa because it helps me balance out some of the frustrations I feel here. I would say the same is true going the other direction. Being in Africa for a while can also frustrate you about the Catholic church there for various reasons. Returning to the United States reminds me of good things we have here. Um, so that's about it for this podcast. We're going to next time talk about some of the uh, particular devotions that are operative in the church in Africa uh, these days in reconciliation and also veneration of the saints.